We say welcome and thank you for all of you who have come, our boys and girls and our adults. We are grateful that you have come to be with us today. Amen. We're thankful that you've come to be with us here today. Today I want to speak to you uh, for a brief moment, and I'm, I promise you I won't be long. You won't get hot. Amen. And it comes from the psalm that was read, Psalm chapter 15. Amen. And we want to focus on the verse 5. And it says, He that put it not out his money to usury, nor take, take it reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. And David asked the question that, Lord, who? Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Or who shall come where you is? Or who shall be able to stand before you? And he started to list off some things of the people who will be able to stand before God. And one of them is he that backbited not with his tongue. But I want to focus this morning on the issue of gambling. I want to focus this morning on the issue of gambling. It is commonly believed and much repeated of our, in our country that our present government has been given some money by some folks who run the illegal number business in this country. And they gave the government the monies on the, uh, in, in case of they, if they had won the government, they would cause a referendum to be put to the people of the Bahamas about gambling, whether it should be legalized or not. Well, the referendum is on its way. But I've come today to tell you that I believe the government have strongest responsibility in trying to put this to the people. Because some of the time, we hired or we put the government in power to do and to rule and to make decisions that will affect our life, not to bring it back to us. Gambling in any form. Now, some people say, what does the Bible say? Well, the Bible doesn't specifically say anything. It doesn't even mention the word gambling. But not because the Bible doesn't say anything about it, mean that it is not wrong. The Bible doesn't say anything about us watching pornography or, 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 or other things that we do on the internet, but we know that it's morally wrong. We know that it's wrong because God requires of us a certain standard as his people. And today I've come to tell you that the Bible says that we are, we are better off if we don't do these things. There's no verse that specifically addressed the subject of gambling. So how do we come to the conclusion that gambling is something that cannot, can become sin in, its, in, in, in one's life? First of all, we had best define the word gambling. Gambling is an activity based on chance in which our risk, the loss of money or some other valuable in order to earn a reward. Somebody said to me this week, Pastor, when you buy a number for 10 cents, you could get $90 and nobody will give you $90. I say that's the truth. Nobody will give you $90. But think about it this way. I've read some stories about some people who were addicted to gambling. Gambling caused them to steal from their parents. Gambling, one lady in, 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 in in Missouri, begged the, the, the legislators not to approve the, 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 the riverboat gambling set because she had lost her husband of 15 years. He became addicted to gambling. He took all of the monies that they had and he spent it on gambling. All that he earned goes to gambling. He don't even go home anymore. And that's why I come to tell you today that gambling, although our country will be put to the question in a little while, I'm, I'm urging you and I'm asking you and I'm employing you and I'm, I'm telling you today that your choice is to vote no. Now, there may be more of us saying yes than no, but you still say no. Let them know that this is not just going to be all right with us. Let me tell you some of the things. When they come gambling, organized gambling, it brings in prostitution. It brings in murder, it brings in robbery, it brings in rape, 
It brings in all of these things along with it. It just don't bring in gambling. And parents, you might say, well, I, I don't have nothing to worry about. No, you really don't. Because gambling won't, won't affect us who are here now or us who will usher it in. It will affect our generation yet unborn. Because once the numbers guys get what they want, then they're going to turn on each other for market share. I want more of the purse than you. You want more of the purse than me. Don't mind them. They're all together now under this coalition they call the We Care. And they said that there are 3,000 jobs out there from this illegal activity. They, they give so much money to this organization and the next organization. All of that sounds good. But when you, when you add up the sum total of it all, when you put it all together, when you bring it all down, the old folks used to say, the pleasure don't work the pain. The Florida lottery is, is, is one of the most popular where our people play. They say they have so much money for education. And they say they have so much money for this and this. And still, with the education system and all that money, the children still doing what they want to do when they go to school. So that don't, education money from gambling doesn't mean that the, ch the education system will be better. It doesn't mean that the people will do different. All it means for us is that we ought to know that gambling is not from God. Although the Bible speaks not specifically to it, but we can never say there was nobody in the Bible who ever was rich or gained anything, any of God's people. Abraham was rich and God made him rich and he was a man that had a lot. Job was rich. God made him rich and he didn't get a cent by gambling. Pastor, that seems so harmless. I, I only take a dollar and I could win $900. The Bible gives us the directives how we should get wealth, you know. The Bible tells us how to get wealth, not by us gambling. The Bible tells us, and, and it's some three ways for us to get wealth. In Matthew, in Matthew, the Bible says it, we get, we get wealth not by gambling. Listen here, gambling undermines every biblical, everything the Bible says about wealth and prosperity. Everything that the Bible speaks to, gambling undermines it. The Bible says this, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 19, by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from the ground you were taken. That's one. And the next one is by love gift. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 11, it says, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's how you become rich. And in Proverbs, by inheritance, the Bible says in Proverbs that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children, children. That's how you get wealth. That's how you get rich. And trust me, people, and people of God, and those of you who, under the sound of my voice, who believe that you can get over by gambling, you cannot, and I, I, I dare you to show me one successful person who buys only, who buys number, and they live by that. Can't happen. Now, I could show you some people who buy number and take chances, and their light is off. I can show you some people who take chance with number and their mortgage is behind. Amen. I can show you some people who children can't go to school tomorrow because they didn't catch that number. Because they take what they had and they try to advance it. And that's not the way the Bible speaks to us. By, by the sweat of your eyebrow. And I believe if you work hard for your money, you shouldn't just give it to somebody so they can live well. Because trust me, some of us, we live in poverty. We live so low. We don't even have running water in our house. You check the number man who we send our money to every week. I know one number man, he built a house on the eastern shore in Nassau, never lived in it. But a 45-room mansion, never lived in it. It break up from the hurricane and people going in it. And you know who money it is? You and I money. 
or who buy number that their money, that's who it is. I know the next one, he owns his own plane. How much of us own our own plane? You could never catch enough money in the number racket to buy a plane. And so today, I come to you and I appeal to you, Bahamas, that let us say no to this referen referendum. Let us tell the government they have the power. The, the, the government could just go to parliament and make an act of parliament and they could legalize whatever they want to. But no, they take the coward way out. They won't put it on us. They won't put it on the people. So they can say, well, the people say so. Well, we know what the people can say. Because they are church members who buy numbers. Amen. Well, if your church don't have none who buy numbers, our church surely do have something. Amen. <laughs> I see them to the number house myself. Amen. And so let us tell the government no. We will not do that to our children. You remember the people in Jesus' days? When, when, when Pilate says, I, I can't kill him. I, there's no evidence against him. The people say, yes, kill him. When Pilate says, but who can take the blame? They say, we don't care. Put it on our children and our children's children. We we'll tell the government, we're not going to put it on our children. We believe the Bahamas should be a place where our children grow up in peace and love and prosperity and not a country of gambling. Trinidad and and, and, and Venezuela and New Zealand, they legalized gambling and now they're having to reconsider it because of all the things that are happening. All the people that are losing their life, all of the people who are becoming addicts and addicted to this gambling. In fact, if the, the truth be told, that's the reason we don't have horse racing in the Bahamas now because the, the people used to go to the racetrack, spend everything they had Forget they had children and things uptown. Forget they had houses to take care of and just spend all their money at the track. And so the government said no. And they talking, but they want us going casinos. Bohemians are not good losers. Bohemians are not good losers. I could see the Bohemians throwing the man's slot machine upside down now because they lose their money. And so Bahamas, we can say no. This church, this people, and I want this all of Abaco say no, although we got a lot of people like to buy numbers and a lot of people like to, to invest. But let me give you another plan. You say, well, what's the other plan? Well, why don't you try this? Jesus, the, the Bible says that the whole nation had robbed me. How did you rob me? In tithes and in offering. If you pay your tithes, if you put in your offering, God says, prove me today. See if I wouldn't open the windows of heaven. Amen. And people of God, I've proven God. I've never bought a number in my life, but I've paid my tithes. And guess what? You find out when you pay your tithes, although you may not be making plenty of money, the little bit of money you're making and you pay your tithes, that'll stretch until it can't stretch no more. Amen. But if you don't pay your tithes, if you, if you don't give God his share, your money will go so fast you wouldn't even know where it's going. I, 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 I lie not. It'll go so fast you wouldn't even know where it's going. You'll wonder, well, I thought I had, I thought I had something. Yeah, you thought you had it, but it's gone now. And that's simply because we don't want to do what God says. We have to do it God's way in order for us to reap the benefits that God says for us. Listen to, the, listen to what God says in Psalm chapter 75, and I'm getting ready to close. He says, he, he, he have, in Jeremiah, sorry, he says, I know the plans I have for you. And they're good plans. And they're to prosper us. And to bring us to an expected end. To make us, and to, 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 to cause us to know what our end will be. But when you gamble, you don't know. The story is told of a man right here in our own community. Who won a number. And went to pick up his money. And time as he picked up his money. And he got back to his house with the money. He was a dead man. Couldn't enjoy it. His own friend had turned on him because he told his friend he had caught the number. His own friend had turned on him, told somebody else, and they decided to take his money and his life in the process. And that's what it'll bring. Because if I hear Cindy win a million dollars next door and I ain't got nothing and my light off and my water off, all the devil can tell me to do is, you better go over by Cindy. She ain't going to notice you. Put on one mask. Get one gun. Don't talk. 
Just tell her, pass it over. And if she don't want to pass it over, the devil say, all you do is you pull the trigger, I can do the rest. You just squeeze the trigger. And that's the kind of country this government want to lead us down. And trust me, saints of God, let me tell you, this gambling issue and, and all of this, this, this thing they're trying to pass now, and then we got another referendum about, about the, 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 the female and, and whether they're able to pass on their citizenship to their children. That's only the, the, the bottom issue. The, the real issue is they, they eventually want to, in our country, cause two men to marry in our country. And you better watch out for that. And Pastor Tinker tell you that. That's the bottom issue. They want to be less like America. Oh, we can do what we want to do. Well, we can't do what we want to do. We belong to God. And let us stay with God. That's why America is in a mess that she is today. And God is he finished with her. Yeah, she's coming down. Don't mind America, Bahamas. Let us do what God said. Let every man have his own wife. That's what they want to bring into our country. Man walking and holding other man on. I say no. I say a thousand times no. And if this government don't be careful, they don't be careful and let the Lord guide and lead them. Just the way they was put up, God will take them down. Because he says it in Romans chapter 13. He rules in the kingdom of man. He set up and he takes down. Amen. So let them be careful. The people of God, all I'm telling you is, you need to vote no on that gambling issue. Tell the government, you got the power. If you is man, then you make the law. And then when the story be told, then we'll know that it was you and your government who made the decision and not the people. It's not supposed to be on the people. The next thing they'll be saying is, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Well, God doesn't want no country to gamble. God says that you should put our trust in him. The Bible says that the nation that forget God shall be what? Turn into hell. And when we go to gambling, when we go to prostitution, when we go to tourism, when we go to all them things and forget God, then we're on our way to hell. And the same God who kept us during the tough time is able to keep us even in these times. Come on, God is able. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. The problem with us is we don't want time. We want to hold on to two cow tails. We want to do the same thing and then we want to expect different results. Well, you don't even get no different result if you do the same thing. In order for you to get a different result, Bahamas, you got to do a different thing. You got to leave that devil alone. So let us not take chance with our hard-earned money. Let us not let the devil cause us to, to, to throw away our children's future. Some of us losing our homes and our houses and, and our jobs and, 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 and all that we possess, we're losing. Simply because we're fooling with numbers. I know a man, he worked for a company and he didn't understand the difference between his money and the company money. So he buy a number with the company money. And lost. And the end result was he lost his job. And he's lucky the people ain't sent him to jail for his, their money. That's what gambling addiction is do to you. Mind them talking, but it ain't it harmless. And, and all of those who 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 trying to to, 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 to to fight the Christian council, but what it is, yeah, the Bible doesn't specifically speak to it, but the Bible doesn't specifically speak to plenty of things. But we don't do them. We don't do them. Because they're morally wrong. And because God is not pleased with it. And that's what I've come to say today. And anything God is not pleased with and you get mixed up with, God can put you in trouble. Because when we start trusting in other things, then we take our trust and our confidence from God. And then God leaves us alone. And trust me, church, you don't, you don't want God to leave you alone. This nation don't want God to leave us alone. Because trust me, anybody who God leave alone, they, they will never be the same. They, they, nobody will help you. So let us put our trust in God. Let us bow our heads today. Father, we thank you. We bless you, God, that you are a God that don't change. You, you are a God. And David asked the question, who shall ascend? Who shall come into your house? Who shall, God, sit with you? You said they that have clean hands and pure heart 
and those that don't backbite against their neighbors, and those of us who don't put our money out to usury. God, we ask today that you would help us, Lord. Even those who have the problem, who are addicted, we come against the spirit of addiction today in our land. We ask today, God, that we would simply trust and hope in you and let what you allow us and you give us during our daily work to, to be sufficient, oh God, and put it to good use today. Father God, we ought to be good stewards of what you have given to us today. We ask, Lord, that you would help us, God, God, we ask that you would help us. Lord, please don't leave us today. Father God, we don't want to be the nation that turned their backs on you, God. We want to be a nation that loves you and that cares for you and, and a nation that God respects you today. And Father, as we come today, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Now, Lord, we come. We pray for our students. We pray for our children today who have come to this service and those who didn't come today, even under the sound of our voice. We pray for the whole entire Abaco. We pray for the entire Bahamas, especially this community of Spring City, God, where you have placed us and caused us to live today. Father, we come against every evil, every plans of the enemy, every victim device of Satan. We come against everything that tries to exalt itself above the name of the Lord. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, God, that you would be with us today. God, we thank you for how you kept them over the summer, over the holidays. You allowed some of them to travel far and near. Now you brought them back, Lord, as they will go to school tomorrow. Father, we pray that they would go and learn all that the teachers and the people who instruct them, instruct them to do. Father God, we pray for their parents, even those who do, may not have anything to send with them tomorrow. God, we pray for those who have all that they need today. Father, we ask today, we are your people this morning. God, we ask that you would bless us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask today that you would even forgive us for our sins cleanse us from unrighteousness and set us free this morning bless our children God they are the future of our nation they are the future leaders the future doctors and lawyers and missionaries and pastors and preachers God we pray for them this morning we pray a covering we put the blood of Jesus on them today we Satan we say that the blood of Jesus is against you this morning and we pray a covering on a protection over them. God put a protection around them that you had around Job today. Thank you, Lord. And we bless you for them today. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your people who have come. Thank you for your adults who have come today to sit and to listen to your word. Thank you for Mr. Cooper, Lord, and his family all the way from Fire Road today. We bless you for Cindy and Kendrick and all of the church people, Ural, oh God, and the work that he's doing here in the community with our young people today. We ask that you would endow him with knowledge, wisdom, endurance today, stamina to do it, Lord, as unto you today. We praise you and we bless you bless you right now God we give you all the praise even for those who didn't make it out this morning whether they're sick or whether they're home God we ask that you would help and bless them today touch and deliver and set free this morning by your power Lord and God we give you all the praise we give you all the thanks. We give you all the honor. We pray for our government. We pray for our opposition. We pray for the police. We pray for the defense force. We pray for the prison. We remember those in the hospital, those in sandalets, those in prison today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those who were murdered and somehow God was killed by those who killed them today. We pray for each and every one, Lord. And we ask this morning, God, that you would comfort you told Mary and Martha, God, that he that believe it in you shall never die. We pray today, God, that you would touch your people. Remember us right now, Lord. Father God, we're in need of you today. God, we believe we got it all together, but Lord, we don't have it together today. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We need you to stand with us today. God, if you don't go with us, we say like Moses of old, we, we dare not go today. Because God, we don't know where we're going. But we ask, Lord, that you would help us today. Bless and guide and protect today. Direct and shield with your love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.